Alright guys, welcome to another video and in this tutorial what I want to do is I want to show you guys something called the shorthand if else statement and it's basically a way where you can write very small if statements. So if you actually have um you know you're having your computer make a decision and you have a bunch of code in your if statements, stick to the other one. This is for when you only have like one or two lines to execute and I'll show you guys the syntax for it right now. So we actually don't even ever type the keyword if but inside parentheses, just go ahead and write your test, which is like, um, is five less than 10 or anything like that. Now press a space after your test and write a question mark. So it's pretty much, you can read it as a question. Now, after your question mark, if it's true, then the true code executes else. And pretty much in place of else, you use this colon this is your false code. So this is a syntax for this is an actual code. Test question mark basically saying is 5 less than 10. If it is, do this. If it's not, do this. So let me go ahead and show you guys an example of when this is actually useful. So what we can do is we can say that we're making a computer game and we wanna um, distribute players on each team based on their name. We'll say if your last name begins with M or above, like mine does Roberts, we'll put you on one team. If it's M or below, we'll split you up on another team. So, of course, we'll put char last, one second, got H, last name, and we'll just put 20 for last name. Hopefully no one has a really long last name. And give them a little prompt. And of course, we'll say something like enter your last name. New line. So, of course, what we can do is put scan F. And remember, since this is indeed not just one character, we actually need to put scan in a string. So, percent S. And that string is going to be stored in last name. So remember, a string and a character array right, are basically the same thing. A string is a list of characters. Simple enough. So whenever we're scanning in a string, such as uh, last name, we use percent %s. And also, take note that it doesn't use um, the ampersand because it has arrays pretty much have a built-in ampersand. And I'll talk to you guys about pointers later on. But anyways, what we did now is we got the last name, which is going to be, in my case, Roberts, stored in this array or string, whatever you want to call it it's actually uh, the same thing so now what we can do is use that syntax of what are we testing for first and let me actually just type that out so you guys know what's going on so this is our test this is the code that's going to execute when true and this is the code that's going to execute if our test is false so the test is just testing for the first character in their name in my case it would return R for Roberts so how do we get that first character? Well, remember to access individual items in that list, you type the name of the array or list and you write zero. Because remember I told you in programming, every list begins with zero. That's just, I don't know, that's how it is. So zero is going to return R, one would return O, two would return B, so on and so forth. So this is gonna be R and we'll say is R less than M. So I don't know if uh, you guys knew this, but you can test characters just like you can um, numbers. So of course, um, like A and B would be less than C, um, D would be greater than B, and so on and so forth. But one thing I want to point out is there is a difference between uppercase and lowercase. So make sure the user types the uppercase um, R in this example. And I'll tell you guys how to convert everything to uppercase or lowercase later on but for now this is pretty good so we'll say is R less than M if it is we'll just say printf you're on the blue team and you actually don't even want that uh, semicolon right here else you're on the red team let me put a space between those because it's kind of annoying me. So basically saying, okay, anyone whose name begins with something M, or excuse me, under M, which is A, B, C, D, all the way to M, 
then put them on the blue team. However, anyone else, put them on the red team. So run this, and I'm going to say, okay, any your last name, R-O-B-E-R-T-S. So you're pretty much going to hit enter. It's going to take that R from you, and check it out. My R is indeed greater than M, so it says, uh-uh. This blue team is only for less than M, so you are on the red team. And one other thing I want to point out one more time is make sure you don't have a semicolon after this. Whenever you have um, a shorthand if else statement, like I said, it's only for, it's not for a code where you're going to write like uh, lines and lines of it. It's for one short code, one line here, and one line here. Pretty sweet, and you can just read it just like a question. So this question mark is like, is the first character less than M? Oh, if so, do this. If not, do this. Reads like a freaking book. How easy is that? And let me actually go ahead and show you guys right now why I use it all the time. So you know how there's an instance where um, this is kind of confusing. Whenever you say I have, I have zero friends. I have one friend. I have two fr uh, oops, forgot about that. So it says, okay, if you have zero friends, then you say, I have zero friends. One, you don't add the S. Two, you add the S again. And that's why I hate the English language because it's kind of confusing. So you need a special instance to say, okay, whenever you just have one friend, you don't include the S which is really probably confusing to like whenever anyone's trying to learn language like babies or foreigners or <laughs> anyone. So it's actually really easy to do in computer programming though. So let's make a variable called friends and we'll set it equal to 87. And this is also um, a different way where you could use the uh, if else statement. It's actually a really cool shorthand one. Can't even type. So printf. And as the first part, we'll just put I have percent D friends and right also, excuse me, just go I have percent D friend. So again, if this is one, then this is fine. However, if it's anything other than one, then you can put percent. And of course, what this is going to be is S because we're just gonna, I'll show you guys what we're doing later on. It could also be C, but you know, tomato, tomato. So now it needs two parameters. The first one is spelled friends, friends, which is basically gonna say I have 87 right now. Now for this next parameter, we have to take care of this percent S, which is gonna be an S or not. So now we can say our test is let me give myself a little space to work with. What we're testing for is this friends variable and we want to test if it is not equal to one. So that is our question that we're pretty much asking and we'll say if it's anything other than one then just go ahead and use s as the string. Else and you can just put a blank string I don't even know if I told you guys that but you can indeed have a blank string and what this is pretty much going to mean is this. I have whatever number it is, friend, and then it's going to say, do I add the S or do I not? Well, in order to answer this question, here is your little shorthand if else statement. And the test for this is, okay, is friends, the amount of friends, anything but one? If it's not equal to one, then add the S. And this is the case, zero, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth. However, if it is equal to one, add nothing. So now we run this. I have 87 friends with a S. Printing this out right here. Now if we change this to one, I have one friend. Because it said, okay, it's not equal to one, that's false, and whenever it's false, run the else statement, which is nothing or empty. So this is actually what I use on my uh, website. So, you know, if you ever uh, go to Bucky's room and said, okay, Bucky has one friend, Bucky has zero friends or 87 friends, that's how I do it. So 
now you guys know there's my secret thank you guys for watching and uh well go check out my website